to the December 13th meeting of the Hadley Select Board. I'm calling the meeting to order at 7 o'clock. The first order of business is uh, we have a consent agenda this evening. And on that consent agenda, we have a design contract amendment for the Senior Center. We have a common VIC license for Pereira Donuts, doing business as Dunkin' Donuts over here on the corner of Russell Street. And I think we have an update on that. Yes, we're asking if the common VIC license being Excuse me. Uh, BMA contingent upon them receiving their uh, certificate of occupancy from the building inspector. Okay. Uh, and then another common VIC license, uh, automatic amusement and entertainment license for PINS, which is the new um, bowling establishment going in at the mall. We have a and we're asking for those to be contingent. And those would also be contingent upon the certificate of occupancy. Yep. Okay. Um, we have a DPW hire, uh, Mr. John Boisert, Jr., and license renewals, um, and we have a list attached for that. And Jennifer, do you want to run down the uh, renewal list? Or um, not all of the renewals, but it, you said some you need to have. Um, I'm, I'm asking for Gregory's uh, pastry shop. Um, they submitted their uh, paperwork today. Um, I was out at a class, so I've not been able to confirm that they've um, fulfilled all of their obligations. I'm asking you to vote their license contingent upon me confirming with the sewer department that all fees have been paid. Okay. So just adding Gregory's to this? Yes, that is the only one at this time that has come in. Okay. Everyone else is in good standing? No, I have a, another list of people who have have missing documents and have not responded to me. Okay, but they're necessary. they're not on this approval list. list. Okay, so why don't we system. vote and then maybe you could let us know who those are? Absolutely. Okay. So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Um, and again, with the approval contingent upon the certificate of occupancies mm -hmm. and uh, Gregory's. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Made and seconded. Any discussion on these consent items? Except for the DPW. Except for the DPW. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 Okay, great. And Jennifer, who is it that's not in good standing at this point? Um, <clears throat> Namco, the timeout at the, the arcade is not. Um, Starbucks, I have com halfway completed applications. People have not turned in all of their paperwork. Um, Foreign Auto House has not submitted any paperwork at all. Taco Bell, doing business as George Fellows, doing business as Taco Bell, has not submitted any of their paperwork. Mm -hmm. They're the two that have not responded to me. Okay. Um, Everyone else, the Starbucks has not submitted all of their paperwork. Are they closed? The Starbucks? Mm. No, they're the one by Chipotle. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, no, no, I know where the building is. I'm asking, are they are they close to completing their application? Is there they any? They are close to it, but I do not have all the paperwork. Mm -hmm. And all of the other businesses have submitted all of their paperwork upon request. Um, Global Spectrum, doing business at the Mullen Center. We're still missing a business certificate from them. And um, that is it. Uh, we have a few class two auto licenses that are not renewing. So we don't, we're not meeting again for the rest of December. It's a calendar year. Um, In the past, the, the select board have given a couple of days of grace uh, to get the last paperwork in. I think uh, with the exception of for auto house, uh, everybody's making a good faith effort to get uh, to communicate uh, maybe that foreign auto house has made a business decision we don't know yeah, I do not know. so where are they located they're located at the Coolidge bridge they're, they're, they're no longer in business action ambulance is there correct is there? Yeah. yeah it used to be co co uh, there used to be two businesses there there was foreign auto house and so they're gone though they're no I longer there seen any I haven't seen any uh, cars there for a while I would like to make a motion to approve the licenses on contingent that they get all the paperwork in before the end of the year second okay all in favor of that aye aye, aye. aye. Thank you. okay 
right, thanks, Jennifer. <coughs> okay, that is it for the consent agenda. We do have time this evening for uh, public comment, if anyone is here for public comment. No? Well, can we uh, go back to the consent agenda and do the, uh, the yes. surplus property? Okay. Um, this was a, a late, thank you, David, a late item Mike Spaeth Nabel brought to uh, David's attention on Monday. So he would like to um, request that the board declare Rescue One 1987 GMC value van a surplus. Um, it has, does have a value of $500, and the intent is to put it to Douglas Auction. So I don't know if everybody had a chance to read this, but um, everybody comfortable with this? I am. Motion second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. It does say 715, so this this is a good opportunity to enjoy this. Oh, public yeah. yeah. access. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see, let's see. How about Jane? Oh, how about Jane? Hey, Jane, Jane, you want to go ahead? I'm here with the Senior Center update report. Mm -hmm. Okay. The building, Senior Center Building Committee has approved the schematic design and we're now moving forward in the design development phase. Mm -hmm. um, one potential interesting happening is that we're having conversation with Smith Vocational High School about them doing a community service in terms of the horticulture planting at the new senior center. And that's still way in the early stages. Mm -hmm. But it's an interesting thing to look at. Yeah. And that's my report. Okay. And then I think there's a, a brief meeting with, um, collaborative meeting with the folks from the library. Yes, Friday. we are meeting Friday with the library people just that's to fun. keep everybody on the same page. Yep. Yeah. Good. Which good. is good. And anything on the library that I don't think there's anything. I don't think there's any movement right now. Uh, Linda and I uh, did meet with our chief financial advisor to make sure that the, the cash flow management over the next three or four years is going to be working in, in, so that uh, we're able to get borrow exactly enough to get the job done when we need to do it. So everything seems to be moving along smoothly there. Okay. Great. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Hope you feel better. Thank you. Feel better. Yeah. I'm understanding that. I'm certain. Yeah. So Stanley Sedlowski retirement. Stanley, would you like to step forward? <laughs> no, you, you can stay there. <laughs> can you highlight them from there? Yeah. So um, I believe, Jerry, you have something to read to Stanley. I do. It's my honor to, to read the proclamation for Stanley from the uh, select board, Tana Hadley. Whereas Stanley Sedlowski is a graduate of Hopkins Academy, and whereas Stanley Sedlowski is a public servant of the town of Adley, working for the fire department, as well as Department of Public Works, whereas Stanley Sedlowski has received training and certification in firefighting and heavy machinery operations and achieved the rank of Deputy Chief of the Hadley De Fire Department, and whereas Stanley Sedlowski has proudly and faithfully served the town of Hadley for over 35 years uh, on the Department of Public Work in 47 years uh, for the Fire Department acting as a professional example to all others. Now, therefore, we the select board for the town of Hadley, Massachusetts, on behalf of the inhabitants, do congratulate Stanley Sedlowski on the occasion of his retirement. We wish him all the best as he enters into the next adventure of his life and take great satisfaction in the work he has performed for the town's people at the town of Hadley. Congratulations given the 13th day of December in the year 2017. We really appreciate everything you've done. Whether it was snowstorms or fire and fires, the town of Hadley is a better place because of all the hard work that you've done for us. We really appreciate it, and we're, we're lucky to have you for 47. We wish you had with you for another 47. Thank you very much. Welcome. Good job done. <laughs> and just so you know, we're not um, trying to be chintzy, but uh, there is a frame for this that is coming soon. <laughs> so, so we could give you one today, but your fr framed one will be to you shortly. Right. No Je problem. Jennifer's right on it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm going to miss you on my street. I'm used to seeing you, you uh, do the winter plowing. What are we going to do now? Jerry, can you follow? That oh, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. John's going to cover. 
I, I would just like to say that I, I've only well, it'll be two years in March since I've been here, and uh, Stanley certainly fits the the bill that you know you get woke up in the middle of the night and there's an emergency. There, there's always the few that you know are going to answer the phone no matter what the occasion is. Um, and I've been comfortable knowing if I needed one person and couldn't get a hold of anybody, Stanley always answered answered the phone, always answers it. Um, in my opinion, every the stories I've heard. Um, the, the help he's given me since I've been here with the institutional knowledge and, and uh, you know telling me where things are and where they're not in town uh, it, it, it's been a, a big help to me a big boost to me and uh, I will say that in many ways I'll miss Stanley he does a lot of the, the little things that matter uh, puts the extra detail in the little things you know down to the potholes to the to the wee whack and the guardrails um, he's the only person I've ever known that can't get poison ivy um, not to be funny but it's true um, so I'd like to personally say thank you, Stanley. Well, I'd like to say so. thank you also from the fire department. Um, you've been Johnny on the spot every time there's been a call, and you've always responded appropriately. And um, thank you for your service. Thank you. And I, I think the first time I ever met you, Stanley, was uh, in a three-day snowstorm, and we were having an argument because we were trying to send you home so you could get some rest and you didn't want to do that. Uh, you <laughs> told me that you had the, the drive and the determination to do the best f for the town of Hadley. So I really appreciate it as much as we argued the point. <laughs> John, anything you want to say? Well, it's been, how many years have we worked together, Stanley? Long time. And, Long I, don't sure. and I don't apologize for all the fun we had. <laughs> <laughs> But you did a good job for all those years. And the fire department, how many chiefs have we been gone through? Fuck. A lot. And same thing with uh, foremans and DPW directors and everything else. I think we've both been there way too long. <laughs> <laughs> it's time. And Stanley, I'm going to use a term that uh, some people may think is negative, but uh, I'm going to call you a throwback. And when I say throwback, I mean it in a very, very positive way. Your, your work ethic. Um, what everybody's speaking to, the fact that you took your job as seriously as you did for the benefit of the town. You understood that you had some responsibility and you always stepped up to the plate. And they do make them like that still, but not as many. So we'll be very sorry to see you go. But I'm assuming you're going to be around. All we can say is still not. Yeah, still not. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again. Thank you. 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 Who are these nice folks? Say, didn't the Stanley, who are these well, nice folks that came to visit with you? So I'm with the fire department, yeah. and um, these are my kids, mm -hmm. and I told them they should come tonight to see a guy who really knows public service, huh. and that's Stanley. And actually, my daughter made this for Stanley. Thank you very so. much. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank Thanks for joining us this evening. Thanks for coming, kids. <laughs> Round up to 7.15, I think. So we have uh, folks from Clippers 44, change of manager, uh, which by law requires a public hearing. So that's why you're here. So, Andrew? Yep. My name's Andrew Morrison. I'm here with John Keith. Hey. John's been with us for 21 years, 20 of them in Hadley's store, and try to give him the reins to do more work. Um, but like your approval for him to become our manager. He's done the hiring and the training of people for the 20 years he's been in Hadley. So we're asking for approval for him to be manager. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any questions for uh, Andrew or Jonathan? If you approve him after all these years, I guess it's tough. He's worked with this many years. It's yeah. tough. Jonathan, I'm sorry that I you're know. moving into Everybody's 22, but... <laughs> 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 okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. 
Thank you. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice holiday season. You too. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thanks for all you do. Um, okay, so could we jump to the St. John Car Amendment to the APR layout? Yep. Hi. Hi. I'm Jonathan Carr. Good night. Good night. Yeah. Thanks, Jennifer. Um, and actually, I, Jonathan, you own a business in the town of Hadley? I do. Where is it? It's at my uh, residence. And where do you do? What do I do? Yeah, this is a, I'm feeding you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I own a business called Car Cider House. Uh, we make uh, hard cider. And, yeah, Andrew just said, where's my cider? Um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, some other some other cider things. We're in the process of. There's uh, about 38 acres up on Mount Warner that was. Uh, I guess it's been orchard since Civil War days, what I hear. But um, uh, we're in the process of removing all the old trees and replanting it. Um, and so we just completed a 12 acre uh, clearing project this fall. Um, so I guess most of the old trees are gone. Um, apple trees. Apple trees. Yeah, they're all. Um, but new ones are coming? New ones are coming. We have down by uh, the house, the River Drive, we have a tree nursery. We have about 3,000 apple trees down there that we're grafting, and then we're going to transplant up on the hill when they're, when they're ready. Um, and so we, we were really lucky to get hold of that property because it was APR and it was affordable. Um, and I guess uh, Town Hadley's a co holder in the APR. Um, and so I just applied to the Department of Agriculture for permission to do a little work related to the orchard, um, which includes uh, building a small utility shed to house machinery, um, uh, fixing up the terracing on the, uh, there's like a really steep sloped section, which um, has these kind of terraces that allow for safe tractor uh, operations up there, but they're kind of rough and the sort of eroded and we want to get in there and kind of flatten them all out again before we replant um, and then also uh, renovate some of the roadways you know gravel them and extend it <coughs> just a little spur alongside the existing barn um, but that apparently that, that all counts as ex excavation under the uh, I guess the Department of Agriculture rules for this property so that's what we're asking for permission to do and in fact I have a uh, holder approval form that I actually submitted to uh, David. I believe we have it in front of us. Oh, okay. It, it wasn't filled in. So I just wanted to give you that I think this this form is the um, with okay. all the all the blanks filled in. So um, yeah, so I, th I mean uh, it's my understanding Jonathan that we're going to start here but there's another phase to this is that we as a co holder are almost authorizing this to go through and it go to the state have they given any indication how successful you're going to be with this project uh, the, the state yeah oh uh, as far as my the, the goals yeah right there uh, getting stuck uh, well we we secured a couple grants to to carry out those projects so um, we should be hundred percent successful Excellent. Um, projects you just mentioned okay. uh, I'm gonna make a motion that we authorize uh, and approve that this be uh, done as a co-holder yeah I'll second it okay mm -hmm. motion made and seconded any further conversation so, questions? so I submitted the application to the assessors to the building department mm -hmm. and to the Conservation Commission they all came back with no objections you'll obviously need building permits and any other uh, required permits but for the purposes of tonight I recommend that you grant the uh, application. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a great project. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Well, thank you very much. Good luck, Jonathan. Thanks, okay. Thanks. Oh, sorry, <coughs> Thanks for helping preserve the Hadley farmland. We appreciate yes. it. Oh. Yeah. And so do the rest of the taxpayers and citizens. <laughs> That's an honor. It's a great spot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks, John. Thanks. So we have um, the Hanaski property agricultural lease, but my understanding is um, there was a just a short delay with the attorney, and that's not available for no, execution. Not quite yet. Okay. So next. Uh, next time. Next time. Right. Yeah, we just signed it all. They got to redirect the check or something. Yeah, the check. Yeah, I think they're picking up tomorrow. Yes, yeah. they're picking it up. Uh, we we yes, yeah, so that uh, the closing will be on Friday. Okay. Good. How we all done? Well, I think he's hanging around for the budget. Okay, um, <laughs> free cash. <laughs> free cash certification I'm calendar. You want to run through that? To that. That's all. He likes this. Yeah. You want to run through that? Sure. So uh, 
you know, we all remember the painful experience of getting free cash uh, uh, later than we had expected and the number being different from what we had anticipated. And, uh, uh oh. Uh oh. Hi. Hi. Were you here for Stanley? Yeah, we're told 7 30, so all of our firefighters are coming up. Oh, no. Oh. No. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's all right. Huh. Oh, that sucks. I'm so sorry. He's not in the parking lot, is he? No, he just drove by me looking like, <laughs> thanks for missing that. Tone him out. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I can call him. No, that's fine. No big deal. Well, it is. Guys. It is. I mean, that's, I, well, yeah, I just didn't know. <laughs> Are, well, you're still going to have spring dinner and do something? Yeah, we're that. still going to have this party. Okay. Dinner, so. This is a typical mis miscommunication for sure. That's fine. Sorry. We'll see ya. <laughs> hey, hey, Chief. Okay, so free cash. You want to keep going? I think you started within an effort okay, to, or so you started in an effort to make the timing work better for the for the budget process. Right. So, you know, we 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 had a number of delays in getting the free cash submitted to the Commonwealth once it was submitted. Um, it was a pretty quick uh, process, although a different process for getting uh, uh, the final numbers to us. So we resolved to uh, put together a calendar by which every department that's involved in this process would uh, sign off on, on the free cash uh, process uh, with certain deadlines starting on June 15th and then having the free cash certified by September 1st. The financial management team reviewed the calendar, uh, came up with the, uh, the, the particulars, st the steps that needed need to happen by certain times, uh, and um, then they signed off on it. So you have in front of you uh, the free cash calendar, which requires your approval. Can why why did we run late last year? We ran late because we had problems getting some of the tasks done, particularly having uh, uh, revenues and expenses uh, uh, reconciled. Uh, there was delays in getting information from one department to the other. Internally within Internally the town within of Hadley? Yeah. Okay. Nothing to do with the state? Nothing to do with the state. Excellent. My manage, financial management team has reviewed this and this is their recommendation? That's yes. their recommendation. Yeah, we, we met and um, you know, part of the issue too is making sure that we do a better job communicating. Uh, as as in most businesses, some people know when somebody who's a critical part of the process is planning on being on vacation, um, and if they, you are scheduling vacation, making sure that your piece of the work is done before you go. I mean, you know, it's kind of standard procedure, but in the absence of having a documented schedule, I mean, you can't fault people for doing what they did so no I understand and I think this is a great answer to the problem that we had last year I'm glad to hear it okay you need a motion for approval or, or would you just uh, presenting this as information for us I need a motion for approval I'd like you all to sign off on it motion for approval is there a second mm -hmm. second okay motion made and seconded all in favor of approving this calendar Joyce that was a kind of a is there some? No, some I, was just, I was just looking over. This is okay. It's okay. John, you think that would be helpful, that schedule? Yeah. I, I mean, we always we've got an issue. We're just going to have to postpone it a week or whatever. And we've done it in the past, but mm -hmm. it won't be as bad as before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, so. okay, motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> okay, and then you want us to sign that, David? Do you have something to sign tonight or just? Yes, I do. So. In this yellow folder? It should be in the yellow folder. If it's not, it's. Maybe just you. This blank one, so I'll need the ones filled out for that. All right, might be downstairs. Okay, well, right. we can also we can sign it at the next meeting, right? We can sign it, sure. The okay. process is first starting. So. June 15th? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Do we need Good. to execute um, that document that we Yes, did? we do. Yeah, this, case case is, this one's blank. Okay. This one needs to be signed right there where my phone is. By Molly? Yeah, by yeah. Molly. Okay. 
Okay, next agenda item then I think is the 2019 budget and annual town meeting. So we've, uh, we're continuing to work on the, uh, the numbers as new information comes in, we're making adjustments. I'm working with the uh, accountants in order to uh, uh, see if I can't tighten up some of the administrative chargebacks for the enterprise funds. Um, so this is still a work in progress, but looking at the revenue figures for FY19 projected at this time, and again, this is going without a whole lot of information. It would be very helpful to have the December revenue numbers in so that I could have a better sense of how things are shaping up for FY18. For 19, I'm looking at a figure of about $380,000 of new revenue coming in. Looking at the expenses historically for our fixed costs and the historical increases associated with education, most of that $380,000 will be snapped up by those two parts of the budget. The fixed expenses such as retirement assessment um, and uh, health insurance and then the school increase which is somewhere between two hundred and three hundred thousand dollars per year. Um, we've been talking about areas of uh, concern in terms of our ability to function such as HR, such as IT, such as maintaining the f uh, uh, fire force that we put in place at great effort this year. Um, as well as uh, finance director, we've been talking about these different functions. We've also been talking about how we can consolidate uh, different functions under other departments. So for example, there's been discussion, but none of it's been defined for the park and rec, uh, for the um, DPW to take on the cemeteries and possibly the maintenance of the park in town. Uh, so obviously we don't have enough information tonight to make firm decisions, but we are getting to a place where we have an all boards meeting coming up on January 9th. And I'm thinking at the next select board meeting, we should be in a place where we should have some clear direction for the departments to uh, start working on their budgets. I've revised the budget calendar so that Budgets are new, now due at the end of January with a presentation of, the, of, of a balanced budget by February 7th. Uh, so I've also submitted to the departments the budget worksheets so that they can work on the non-controversial and recurring expenses that every department has to deal with. Chemicals for sewer, tires for the fire department, gasoline for the police department. Those are things that are not going to change from one year to the next substantially. So they can work on that uh, for right now. But we are getting to a place where uh, it would be helpful to have the select board talk about how do we want to advance the town, what are the biggest priorities, where should we be focusing our, our resources in order to achieve that vision that you have. Uh, in the revenue projections, did you have the new hotel in there? I do not. Um, that new hotel um, is scheduled to be online by July 1st, in which case there would be that revenue both in terms of new growth, so there's an additional $40,000 of new growth, as well as uh, uh, new revenue from the hotel tax. If there is some sort of slowdown in the project, let's say a room, work stoppage or some sort of regulatory issue or supply problem, then we may not get that uh, hotel up and up going by July 1st. So you feel that these revenues, if anything, they're conservative, right? Yes. The projected ones or the projected yeah, ones? revenues. So what's not in there, there's, there's not the new, new hotel because I'm not counting that chicken until it's hatched. Um, mod, very modest growth in the state uh, aid. 
uh, modest growth in terms of local receipts, particularly since we don't see any big projects coming through the pipeline. There aren't plans in front of the planning board for a large development of any kind. Um, and looking and not quite knowing what where our, our uh, enterprise fund administrative charges are going to be. We're still working on that. I'm saying 380 is a conservative number. Yeah, I mean, at this phase of the ball game, I'd always rather um, be conservative in the numbers as we always have been in the past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We get a bonus. We get a bonus. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess the question I have is in terms of, of uh, kind of marching forward, you know, working with the finance committee or whatever, um, you know, taking at face value what you just said, David, that the revenue increase that we're seeing is more likely than not going to be gobbled up by level services in terms of normal pay increases that are already a contractual obligation. Right? Um, that being the biggest share of it. Uh, even having a conversation with the schools at the moment, we don't know where they're headed, right? What we do know is that we have already committed to increasing the fire force, and we need to find a way to fund that. And I think what you're saying is it's likely that the revenues we're seeing here aren't going to quite make that, let alone anything else that we deem to be a priority you know, whether that's finance director, or HR, IT, e even if we're spreading that out, I mean, there's, there's really no room for enhancing without changing the cost structure in some way. That, that's, that that's, that's exactly what I said. Yep. So, um, so given that, one of the things that we've talked about is is it's really hard when 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 you take the budget and you just say okay everybody go back and look at your budget it's not creating an opportunity to for people to talk across you know that they, they are staying within their silo and we have little pockets of you know maybe the two chiefs working together or you know marlo working collaboratively on, on the building maintenance line items with you and that kind of thing but um, you know, I, I, I don't think the group sitting up here, tell me if I'm wrong, but you know, I, don't, I don't think that we're in a position right now that we have information that would cause us to kind of dictate, okay, let's go after this, let's go after that in terms of making big changes. Um, so does it lend itself, you know, we've talked about this before, to maybe some sort of work Group and, and maybe the place to start is, is Town Hall, David, with the financial management team or a subset of that group. You know, we have representation from the select board from the finance committee on that group already. Um, mm -hmm. it, you know, it, and again, I think you want to be careful because you don't want certain, you know, and so I think I'm thinking a subset of that group, not to try to come up with ideas to present back. I mean, I don't, I don't know how to move the ball forward. <laughs> so I'm just trying to. What, I mean, what, what other ideas do you guys have? I mean, can you think of it? I mean, we've come a long way. The police and fire chief are working good together. Marlowe's getting involved a little bit more with them. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know what what other communications need to be opened up between departments and and us. <clears throat> You have your department head meeting that, that occurs every month. I mm -hmm. mean, I think that this is, I, I love the subset uh, uh, design where, you know, you will, let's identify every opportunity there is and let's bring it back <coughs> and let's investigate it. It's, it's using everybody in, in all different departments, hopefully together, uh, to try to look for opportunities that the town might have. It's a great idea. Uh, I think as well you should incorporate the rest of the department heads in the thought process maybe Again, that they have some ideas that we haven't uh, identified. I, I, I just want everybody to be part of the solution and understand going in where, where we are with it. I mean, I think the department heads should understand there's three hundred eighty thousand dollars we're talking about. It every single dime is going to go to their races this year, or to the school. That there's no opportunity there for anything else uh, for us to do. In addition to that, 
Um, we've added the fire police department, we've added the fire department. We're trying to address the needs of, of the community as we see fit. Now we need to fund these processes. Um, and we should identify and, and point out to them the expenses that we are incurring or anticipate incurring and how are we going to fund these things. Um, and then let's come up with the ideas, as you said, and let's bring them back together and massage them to see if there's any opportunity for savings. And then if there's not, then we need to go to another level to try to identify how we're going to fund these things. And I think everybody knows where we're heading with that, but let's exhaust every other opportunity that we have first. Um, and at the all boards meeting, I think that we could, you know, as well take this small five minute segment uh, to try to identify all that information. The more communication we have to all the uh, taxpayers, and I mean all the boards in the town have the, I think the, the more successful we'll be down the road in whatever venue we have to go. What do you think, Joyce? You can have meetings to death. <laughs> I mean, you know, and I think we have had uh, quite a few meetings over budgets and things like that, but having the financial team involved in it is certainly, you know, the way to go, I think. And getting their input, and, and as Jerry says, you know, the department heads coming together and uh, really looking at what their budgets need this year and what's going from there. We haven't even looked at any of that yet. We always know the biggest part of any budget is people's salaries. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, coming up with um, anything else outside of that, the working budgets is, you know, got to separate everybody's budget into what, no, what it is. Then you get the emergencies that come along and you can't plan on those either. Which, which brings me a little bit off the subject here. The DPW department burned down last year. The DPW department had just burned down this week. When are we going to get the fire smoke detectors and heat detectors installed in our DPW wastewater treatment facility? Is the water treatment facility up to date or not with fire protection? Should be. I would venture to say that as new as it is, it should be. Well, sure. this issue has been going on for over four years now, so. I think it's time I you you have passed the buck to Mike Mike has passed the buck to you and there's still no progress here and we need to get it done Jerry do you know that's with the municipal building committee on there for tomorrow do you know I haven't heard <coughs> uh, I don't hear about anything regarding that, that issue for, 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 excuse me, for the for the, fires, for the smoke detectors no. and the fire detectors no. and forgive my so, ignorance but are we talking a modest investment, or are we talking completely rewiring the plumbing, John? Or what do you? Uh, I I believe the highway garage and the DPW uh, need a complete overhaul, mm -hmm. and I believe a couple. There were a couple quotes at one time. I don't know if they're. I believe. Yeah, I believe. How uh, old they are? She spanked me. Well, him and I talked yeah. about it. I don't know, two, three months, four months into my tenure here. Yeah. Uh, that he was working. Working on it. I mean, I don't. I, I can't remember the exact quote, but I remember a discussion on it. So that's not on the capital plan either, right, Jerry? No. What's the number? What, do you know? No. Was, I, didn't we have a funding for this, David? Yeah. So I was going through the uh, the capital <coughs> surplus uh, um, report and found that there is money for this project. I want to say it's in the neighborhood of twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars for this for this. So I thought, okay, so this is, just as you said, this is a project that's been languishing for several years. I've had a number of conversations with people who are taking the reins on this one. Uh, I think... Uh, that's kind of hard to believe that we don't have these things down there. I, you would think that our insurance would be making, just the same thing. making us have those things yeah, in we place have. for coverage, for heaven's sakes. We have these uh, buildings inspected by our insurance people every year, and they come up with lists of recommendations for improvements, which we... Yeah, but there's... I, I believe they're all working, but very minimal. Um, I believe, like, maybe a year ago, the Highway 1 is not working. The last time it got struck by lightning. Yeah, probably uh, it probably had been before. I mean, I, I, mean, I don't yeah, recall anything like that, John. Yeah. Very in two years in March, I've been here. I don't recall. You know, the summer, we don't have a well, maybe it's been two years. years. <laughs> so time flies. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, the units that are in there are probably, I'm going to guess, 
10 or 15 years old. Okay. So they're obsolete now anyway. So, but they're so working. Could Marlon and Mike be able to? I don't know. I don't know. I know the one in the sewer department does work. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a couple of units that that we have bypassed because the units themselves, they're just, you can't buy them anymore. Let's, let's, uh, you want me to reach out? David was in the middle of a conversation regarding funding for this. <coughs> yeah, so I was looking at the, the, the money, it's not been used. Um, I was half tempted to put it into the cleanup article, uh, but then I thought, no, this is a project that needs to move forward. So, You know, with the new electronic equipment that we have, there's really no shutoff switches on the vehicles. and. I don't know what happened this time, but supposedly it was a new vehicle last year in, in that last DPW that it shorted out and the vehicle started on fire and burned the whole building down, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, you got a four or five million dollars worth of equipment sitting in that garage, I think $20,000 to prevent it from burning is uh, a good direction to go in. Well, we're spent. Mm -hmm. so, Sounds like we have a plan. Yeah, so David's yeah. identified the funding, Marla, if you could just work with Mike Spank Mabel and then get the information to David to see what it takes. Okay, so yeah, thanks, John. The, okay. the, the funding or the amount of funding along to me in an email. So I've got it done in my office. No, Santa Claus, that's not how it will work. You, you send a good request <laughs> for, for the $6,000 and we'll find something to do with the other 14. Let me rephrase this. Just I'd like an idea of what we're working with when I'm working with. Uh, the chief to, to, to see where we can go with this. And well, get. there's 22,000 available, so. <laughs> I don't need the account number, I guess. Send Marla the check, he'll take care of it. <laughs> When's that Christmas party you're having down at DPW? <laughs> next Friday at 1 o'clock. That's right. So the way I see this one happening is there, your next meeting is January 3rd. Happy New Year. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, by the end of that meeting we'll have two things in place. We'll have clear instructions for the departments because their, their budgets are going to be due uh, like 20 days later. Um, and uh, we're going to have uh, an outline for the uh, all boards meeting on the night. So the committee is going to come back to us with recommendations? Not I mean, by January Not 3rd. by January 3rd. So I mean as far as, you know, other than level funding, what level services? Level services um, I mean, I don't know how much more direction is needed other than that. If we if we had five hundred and eighty thousand dollars there, and we were to be able to you know entertain some requests for and prioritize the request that we were looking at for the budget season, that's one thing. But I mean, if we think it's three eighty and we're conservative in the number, but we're realistic in the number, and that's already been spent, I don't. You know, we can dance around that, as Joyce always says, with, with more meetings and such. But, you know, we're level servicing everything that we got for the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think in terms of the department heads, it has to be. Yeah, and I think what I mean by, you know, it's not that people won't work together. It's just the, this is human nature, too. I mean, we're, we're at this point where if we're truly talking about reducing expenses somewhere in the absence of it being a, a line item like an OPEB or something that doesn't involve people or, or you know a department or whatever people people their instinct is going to be to protect what they have so and that's what I would do that's what everybody would do in that position so you kind of need some objective poking from the sidelines to say, I know this is the way we've done it, but could you do it this way? Could you do it that way? To try to provoke that sort of thought. And I absolutely agree with you. Never should anything like this be imposed. People have to be at the table, but first you have to identify what we're talking about. So I think if maybe the financial management subgroup could come up with some ideas and then go back with the feasibility to the departments that might be involved, and then come back. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So that, that's when I'm All right. Sounds good. Proceed in that fashion. Okay. All right. Anything else on the um, <laughs> Thank you, Joyce. So are we also anything else within this budget and annual town meeting that you needed to highlight, David, or can we move on to just get a quick update from you? 
Um, I think that uh, the um, the only th well we can cover the update uh, the information in the update. So okay. Wherever that went to on my computer here. I think you get a hard copy. Right. Okay. Good. Uh, so we have a quick update on the MS4, the stormwater permit. Uh, we have been operating under a. a grant to review all of our uh, bylaws, subdivision regulations, and other codes for how do we manage our stormwater now, and what do we need to do to change those bylaws in order to comply with the new requirements, which one of these days will come. Um, again, this is grant funded, so it's been a free freebie for the town. Hadley, those uh, about four changes have been submitted to the planning board, DPW, to me, having to do with the uh, unified stormwater bylaws, because our bylaws were all over the place. Some were uh, administered by the planning board for stormwater control, some were uh, administered by the Board of Health, some were uh, administered by the DPW. So we've uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, who did the heavy lifting on this, consolidated and streamlined all of those regulations. So now those are incorporated into the annual town meeting warrant for right now. Planning Board is going to be having a hearing on these uh, regulations very shortly, just got posted. So that project is moving along. Um, not a whole lot of uh, updates from the last meeting that we had, um, let's see, you changed, you changed, the, you signed the revised designer contract at your meeting tonight for the senior center. Um, we're working on a revised budget and timeline for the library construction. We'll be having a meeting on Friday in order to do some coordination between those projects. Um, we have a application um, for an IT grant under the Commonwealth Compact that will be submitted for funding in 2018. The SCADA project is moving forward and bids are due on December 19th. Let's see, Lake Warner Dam repair, that paperwork is submitted. Uh, the audit is underway. We had two days of the auditors doing the preliminary work uh, today and yesterday. Um, paperwork and comp procurement compliance checks were submitted to the auditors, so there have been no problems there. We did uh, ask uh, Melanson and Heath Wally to email you on, uh, uh, on a weekly basis to let you know how the project is going along. Right now it's the paperwork project. Check. Tax rate has been submitted and approved, certified. You have a copy of that. Um, free cash certification calendar has been endorsed by you. Um, and there's a knitting sale at the Friends of the Goodwill Memorial Library of all, all December long. Great Christmas presents. Yes, mm -hmm. great Christmas present. Keep you warm in a night like this. Okay, anything any, else? Any questions? I skipped over a lot that, that's there, but uh, just wanted to give you the highlights of the updates. Uh, does, do we have a minute to talk regarding um, concern, not concerns, but uh, questions from the Municipal Buildings Committee? Because mm -hmm. sure. uh, we had a meeting on Monday night. Yep. Um, and um, they had some things that, that they wanted me to, to bring back and just to discuss with everybody. Um, Last fall, they went to the to CPA with some things like painting of town hall, and I think there's been some conversations with you regarding it that it, it didn't seem as though that they were kind of um, online and on page with what can and cannot be done by CPA and paid for by CPA. So they were wondering if, in a friendly way, we could bring someone from the state out and maybe. Uh, attend it, maybe host a, you know, um, a bunch of communities to sit down and understand a little bit more 
about the CPA and what, what things qualify and what things don't qualify for them. We certainly had Town Hall painted. It was the very first project that CPA did. Um, and the Municipal Buildings Committee, in an effort to try to get Town Hall painted again, uh, would like to submit that to CPA, but they didn't feel that it was very well received the last time they spoke about it. Um, that it was almost like that's a maintenance issue and doesn't need to be brought before us. Is there anything else you have? So I think that we want to just make sure that everybody's educated and on the same page with it. I don't want to get into a big contest regarding what's available and what's not available, but I think if, if something could be done educationally to help everybody be on the same page, um, that would work out a little better. Just a thought. So I did uh, reach out to Mr. Andy Morris Freeman, who is the chair of the CPA, and I, I asked him for the two things, the calendar by which people need to be submitting their CPA applications, but also I wanted them to tell, <coughs> pardon me, tell us the uh, expectations of the, and requirements of the CPA committee. If there's a requirement for matching funds, what is that requirement? If there's a requirement that somebody needs to talk to historical or park and rec or housing or um, or any of or the Open Conservation Commission um, prior to submitting, what are those requirements? Are we using the right form and all that? We did work out a calendar for submission. Uh, and I can tell you the dates if you wish, but I'll, I'll send that out to all the departments. But we need to, as you said, we need to have, have clear expectations as to what is required for a su successful submission to the CPA committee. I, I think that painting a town hall, which is done in excess of 10 years ago, and I know that doesn't seem like an awful long time ago, but I mean, um, the, 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 the committee doesn't want the building to have to fall into disrepair before it gets done and, and you know if the select board uh, needs to help them submit that uh, on behalf of the town they're you know they said if that if that helps then, then great but we just think it was done before and we think it ought to be done again and that was their their concern with it it still needs to be remembered that it's tax money you know, taxpayers are paying it every bill they get. They're putting money into that CPA fund every time they send their money in. And uh, if it's going to preserve a building that we have and want to take care of it, they've always, you know, we've been condemned uh, for not doing so with other buildings. And we still want to preserve this building as our town hall. Um, you know, we need to we need to do that. Yeah, and then I think if it's a case where. You know, I agree again, with you I would, having somebody come out and yeah, and if, if there's like case law or something that says quite clearly, you no, know, in, in two other towns, you know, it was adjudicated and determined that absolutely not, then I'd be open to seeing that. But it doesn't seem like that's quite what, what we get, you know. So let me give you those dates. February twelfth is the CPA uh, deadline. You need to submit by that date. February 26th, and it's the first CPA public hearing, and March 12th is the second, and the expectation is that applicants should attend both. So David, is there, to Jerry's question, is there expertise at the state level? Yes, there is. Okay, is that something that you could coordinate? Yes, I can. Okay, because I mean, having a deadline is one thing, but I think the point is, they aren't sure, I mean, you can meet the deadline, but if you're continuously submitting ineligible projects, you're just Every, hitting Everybody needs to well. be informed before yeah. that. Right. Well, I'd like to at least say that we do support the building committee on this project and um, mm -hmm. certainly help them to submit that before the February 12th deadline. February 12th. They, they are absolutely uh, would want to do that. Yes, so yes. Um, if, if I could just make sure that, that the Municipal Building Committee gets this information forwarded to them as well. Yep. For the dates, please. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, they, um, they wanted to know when the, when, the, um, build, when the property was actually being bought, the Hynoski property. They might have believed that's being done Friday? Friday. Okay, Friday. I can report that back to them. Um, <laughs> they said, sell North Hadley, I'll call it quick. If we have um, uh, a, a person who's offered to buy North Hadley Hall and they've offered to allow the trucks to be uh, stationed there for an extended period of time 
um, and we have an offer to buy it and we can't do anything else with it and it's gone before to Joyce and John's uh, concerns that it's been before us uh, to get something done with it and to sell it and what's holding us back now from selling that building? Uh, we need to start the whole procurement process over again with the town meeting vote. Why? Uh, your town meeting vote authorizing you to sell that property is now stale. It's over three years old and our attorneys will say you need to revote that in order to make sure that you have the will of the people uh, to sell the town property. So but on the agenda. Wait a minute. Is there any flexibility with that? Is there, I mean, I, it was a, a unanimous decision? Yeah, so I mean, I it can, was, it wasn't, it I mean, wasn't 103 to 102 on the vote. So I mean, in, an, in, in the real world where I would think that we live in, in breathe, if it was a unanimous decision of the taxpayers of the town had to sell that, and then we ran into some hiccups along the way, okay, it is three years later, completely understand that. But it was a unanimous vote. Does that still uh, question whether the will of the people is being? I can double check with council, but I, I have run into this in the past where we're in a, a vote that's basically too old uh, can be challenged uh, legally. So you want to you want to make sure. What do you that mean? You Joyce has brought it up every meeting. So yeah, that it's nothing stale about it. Nothing stale about it. Exactly. <laughs> Could you double check with council? I can double check, but I can, I can also start the uh, procurement of uh, paperwork going too. All right. I thought you said we needed to go to town meeting to start that. I can start working on the front end documents, um, and you know, if we needed, uh, we should check to see whether the historic preservation restriction is fresh and whether that needs to be uh, re updated. I, it is what it is. That was, that was one of the conditions of the original vote was that there would be historic preservation restriction. It may be that we're still good with the one that we have, but maybe just have them sign updated. off and make yeah. sure that they still agree with what they what they've decided at their meeting. You know. Yeah. The truth be told, there's a, almost a completely new historical commission that we're dealing with now versus the one that uh, was reviewing that one in the past. I mean, I'm happy to sell the building. I'm not trying to stand in the way of its uh, of its disposal. It's just that we need to jump through a certain number of hoops. Legal. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you memorialize these two conversations too in the letter that you sent to the municipal buildings uh, regarding the dates for the uh, uh, CPA as well? Uh, number one is uh, Friday will be the sale date for the. Hynoski, or the purchase date sure. of the, the Hynoski property, please. And uh, North Hadley Hall, um, if you can just uh, let them know that that that, that it, once you've confirmed or denied that that the uh, it's either stale mm -hmm. or not stale. And the CPA deadlines. Yes, please. And then. And um, the other question, though, too, is now: uh, is it the whole piece of property? Is what the whole piece of property? The say, are we selling the whole thing? Or? Now it's, now it's the question of because we're not putting the substation on that piece of property. Mm -hmm. So will it be the sale of the whole piece of property and not just the, the whole building piece itself? The have to re reconsider the offer. Mm -hmm. So that was the other thing that uh, should be brought forward mm -hmm. too. <coughs> Is it the will of the select board that I put on an article to, um, if, it, if needed, to sell North Hadley Village Hall? And property. Yes. And, if, and only if we, parcel. only if we want to do it. I mean, yeah. if there's yeah. any in, anything else that's a hindrance to selling that piece of property, we need to talk about that before it goes on town meeting floor. And again, we have another three year lapse before it gets accomplished. Right. Can I ask a dumb question, David? And it's no question is done. No question is done. Well, somebody asked me, and I didn't really have a good answer for it. Why do we? Why do we create? the warrant so early and then put ourselves in a position where we're then taking things off of it instead of having conversations that ultimately lead to the creation of the warrant. Because it seems like sometimes we, what happens is we put things on there and then it's like, oh, and people start talking about it when it's just a placeholder. And then people are upset when people don't submit things for it. I mean, it just seems so backwards. Backwards, yeah. Why, so why do we do this? 
I mean, maybe it's just we've always done it this way, but. Well, the, the, way, the way that I've been presenting your warrant is that I give you a preview of what I think your, your, the items are going to be uh, uh, dealing with on a year in and year on a, on a basis, as well as special projects that we know are coming up. Then I give you another warrant when we uh, when we close the warrant, which will contain all the other submissions from all of the parties, petition articles, capital requests, bylaw changes from planning board and from, uh, CPA articles, um, and then you decide whether you want to keep that article, that warrant uh, uh, in its prop in its form or not. I don't mind us doing that, but I don't think the warrant should go out to anybody else or on anywhere uh, for people right. to view until it's almost. I mean, it could be like just a list. Yeah. A, a list of, of you know, possible articles. Okay. But, but not go to all the trouble of creating a, a, an actual, right? And at the beginning of the meeting, you want all the input from everybody from all the departments. So if you don't start with everything, how do you know what direction the town and the departments really want to go? I think it's a good idea the way it's set up now. We can take it off at any time, you know. I have a dream that... <laughs> last guy that started like that did okay <laughs> for a while. Uh, there are towns out there that have mapped out their articles for the warrant uh, for the annual town meeting five years in it uh, out so that they know what's coming up. They know the special projects. They've got their planning and their timing down to the point where they know when a particular building project is going to need the vote of the town meeting. Mm -hmm. And they've worked out every town meeting from for the next five years, every article that's on that town meeting warrant whether it's got the recommendation of the finance committee or not, uh, and what kind of uh, majority vote needs to happen. Mm -hmm. um, we're not that far away from that process at this point. If we can, if we can marry the, uh, the five-year capital plan as well as your strategic vision together, I think you'd have uh, an outline of the next five annual town meetings. I think that's the opposite of what Ma was saying that we should go. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, uh, <laughs> that's his dream. Yeah, hey, okay. my dream. <laughs> I, I just, I, I would like to see us spend our time focused on the, the, the plan itself. The, mm -hmm. the warrant is a means to an end, ultimately, in order for you to achieve your goals. They're going to require town meeting votes, I'm sure, you know, so the warrant's going to carry the day in that regard. But um, again, I, I, my concern is just that things get tossed on there. They haven't been fully vetted. I agree with John. I mean, we never want to stymie ideas coming from department heads or other people where they say they would like to see something on the warrant. But I, I would rather just not put ourselves in a position where the impression is that once it goes on the warrant, it's on the warrant, and then we have to take it off the warrant, um, which can cause some agita, as opposed to having a running list, and then the select board says, okay, this is what we think should be on the warrant, and then people still have an opportunity to say, hey, wait a minute, what happened to mine, you know, just something to talk about. I didn't know how to answer the question. It, it needs to be, because then if we vote something down, People still have the time to petition it if, if that that many of the citizens feel that strong about it. You've got to give them time to address these issues, just like we need the time to address these issues. Yeah, no, we'd still have the the, de the legal deadlines, John. That wouldn't be an issue. It's just right now, I don't know why we're sitting here looking at a draft more. Okay, enough. I was just just a question. Uh, another issue for the uh, municipal buildings committee is um, we voted for firemen and to understand what the fire force is going to look like um, and it needs to be explained to me they were under the impression that there was going to be a chief a lieutenant and then four additional hires um, that's not the way it was voted correct there is a chief there's a lieutenant there's an additional hire which has already been hired right. and then there'll be two additional mm -hmm. uh, people that will be added to the force mm -hmm. okay three three additional 
screen. Well, one of them's already there. Yeah, but there was going to be four new, four new bodies. There's a chief and a lieutenant already. Right. So adding four more: the mechanic, the deputy chief, and two firefighters. So there'll be six full-time fire department people. Yes. Anybody have anything else? David, your about to raise your hand? No. Do you look like you're other other than other to to wish everybody uh, however you keep them a joyful uh, holiday. Anybody have any announcements or um Maddie McDonough. Maddie. Maddie McDonough passed away uh, last week, right? Um, and Maddie, I wasn't a citizen of the town of Hadley, but certainly had a lot to do with the town of Hadley. He uh, was one of the owners of the courthouse, built the courthouse uh, down here, and was a great and wonderful character. I enjoyed Maddie tremendously, and I'm sorry to see him go. Condole Thoughts and prayers. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. A very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to all of our citizens and workers in the town of Hadley. Uh, Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah right now. Holidays. Yeah. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Second. There's a second? Yeah. Okay. Good night, everybody. Oh, I'm sorry. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Good night, everybody. Merry Christmas, everybody. See you next year. Yeah. Oh, the tree lighting was wonderful, too.